Hello and welcome to the video. This is a quick video, well, as quick as I can make it, on how you can change the position of the OSD elements on this thing here. This is the Q-Lite OSD, and it is a little Wemos Arduino on top of a board with some extra components on here, and it basically provides an on-screen display for your HD FPV goggles without having to use a flight controller. Now, I've done a couple of videos on this already. I'll put links down below, one showing how you put it together um, and some other things as well. And I thought it would be fun to kind of show you how I've updated this. Unfortunately, it does require you downloading the Arduino IDE software, setting that up and editing a sketch. Um, and for those of you that don't do that kind of stuff, it is kind of going to feel like you're hacking the matrix. However, if you have a little bit of computer know-how, then it's relatively straightforward. Let me very quickly outline what we're going to do here just to set the scene. So if this feels like it's going to be too much, you can kind of tap out now and use the Q-Lite OSD as it comes provided because it does provide a nice on-screen display, but there are lots of additional elements on there that could be things that you don't want to see. First thing we're going to need to do is download the Arduino IDE and download the source code for the project itself. All the files and all the links for this stuff are actually going to be linked in the description below to make it as easy as possible. Next thing we need to do is then we need to download the additional board descriptions for the particular Arduino that's in this project. And we also need to download a number of additional libraries as well. There are a number of libraries that's going to need. It has a GPS connected, so it's going to need a GPS library. It has a barometer connected, so it's going to need a barometer library. It also has a connection to the air unit of the HD system, which it needs to talk MSP. So it's going to need an MSP library as well. And once you've got all of those, then it's got all the code it needs in order for the Q-Lite OSD stuff to work. Once you've done that, then you just need to tell Arduino what kind of board it is and what kind of flash size it has. And then you can open the INO file that you've downloaded and then edit it and move anything around and have the on-screen display looking exactly the way that you want to. So let's go onto the computer and I'll go through each of those individual steps. Again, links down below to every single one of these pieces. And I've also put time codes as well if you're looking for a particular bit, if something isn't quite making sense. Again, this is only needed if you want to change the position of it. If you don't, then you just download the files available from the project directly, flash it as I've already shown in other videos, and it'll work fine. This is only for those of you like me who want to move things around and maybe turn things off as well. So let's go through those individual steps that I just outlined quickly in the introduction. First thing we need to do is download the Arduino IDE. If you go to arduino.cc, again, links for all this stuff down below, go into software and then scroll down to you get to the GitHub bit. If you click on GitHub, then in here are the latest releases and there are versions for Windows, Linux, Mac OS, all the usual stuff. I just downloaded the Windows 64 bit.exe. I'm running Windows 10 here and installed it and that was all that. Other thing you need to do is to download the actual source files for the Qlite OSD. Again, this link is in the description down below. Click on releases for the latest and then we have the ability to download the source code as a zip file. Unzip that and stick it in a directory. Once you've got those files, then the next thing to do is for us to set up the Arduino IDE stuff. So let me start that. And what we'll do is we'll go through the steps to add the additional things that we're going to need in order to edit the Qlite OSD project. So the first thing we need to do is add the additional boards into this so that we can choose the board that we need to flash. So what we're going to do is go into File and Preferences and then you need to copy these two additional locations into this area. If you already have information in here, then just put a comma after it and then post this afterwards. The other thing we also need to make a just a note of is where the sketchbook location is because we potentially need to go in there in a minute to do some of the stuff. But once you have put those extra links in, and again, they're in the description down below, click OK, it'll then add the additional boards that we need to set up the Qlite OSD stuff. Next thing we need to do then is to go into Tools, into Board Manager, which is here, Control shift b on a 
Windows device will find it. And then we're searching for ESP8266. And what you should find is this one here. It's uh, version 3.0.2 as I'm recording this. And this is the one that I've installed. Just click on install and install it. And that will then give you one of the key libraries that you need. The next thing we need to do then is to go and include a number of libraries. So we need to go into sketch. We need to go into include library, manage libraries. And then in library manager, we need to search and install two. First one is called tiny GPS plus. And there it is. So we need to install that one and that will then give us all the pieces that we need for the communication from the OSD to the attached GPS. And the other one we need to do is look for one called BMP 280. Hit enter to search for that. And we're looking for the one that's the Adafruit BMP 280 library. Uh, the version that I've got here is 265 as I'm recording this. Click install. Now when you click install, it will ask you, do you want to install just the individual library only or install all. Make sure you click install all because you'll need these other pieces as well. And that is the majority of the hard stuff done. There's only one other piece that we need to think about. And if we open the files that we downloaded, so this is what is actually in the zip file that you download. There's a couple of cool things in here that we need to keep our eyes on. One is this OSD positions. This is downloaded as part of the pack. Uh, make sure that you have that open. This actually shows the numbers that are needed in the code. So for example, if you wanted a particular thing to appear in the top left hand corner, you need to set the number for its position in the OSD to 2048. Similarly, if you wanted it in the middle on the right hand side, you want it something like 2330. So we'll just keep that handy. The other thing we want to find is in libraries, there's one called MSP. So what we need to do is we need to copy that and then we need to find where that link was. So if you remember in IDE, if we go into file preferences, there's this location here. So we need to go there and put MSP in the libraries area. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into documents. We're going to go into Arduino, into libraries, and then right click and click paste. And there is the paste. So now we have these five libraries in here that we're going to need in order to do this stuff. You only have to do this once when you're setting everything up. And now we've got the Adafruit stuff for the uh, barometer, we've got the stuff for the GPS and the MSP and this one is the one that you use, the library that you use to create the multi wee serial protocol, which is what MSP stands for, telemetry information that goes to the air unit. We've kind of done all the hard stuff. So with all that done, what we can do is we can actually start playing with stuff. So let's close that up, go back into where we downloaded everything and here this is the stuff that we downloaded, the Qlite OSD files. If we go into Qlite OSD, there's one called QLiteOSD.ino. And if we double click on that now, it'll launch the Arduino IDE. And what we should hopefully see are three tabs. And these three tabs look something like this. You have the INO file, you have MSP underscore OSD dot h and you have the osd positions this is the one that we're actually going to edit to move things around however before we start changing things here there's just two last things we need to do to make sure that when we flash it to the wemos arduino that's used in this project it's all set up right so what we need to do is go into the board stuff so we need to go into tools Make sure that we've got ESP8266. That's one of the reasons why we added that originally. Make sure that we have this one selected, which is Lolin or Wemos in brackets, D1, R2 and Mini. Make sure you've got that one selected. The other thing we need to do is go into Tools, into Flash Size, and make sure that you have this one selected, which is 4 megabyte brackets, FS colon 2 megabyte, OTA colon tilde, 1019 kilobytes. So that is what you need to set. Okay, now we can actually start playing. We have done all the hard stuff. And again, all that stuff you only have to do once. And then when you want to change things, we can. Now, in this file here, 
And as I said at the beginning, this is the way back in the day that we used to set up and configure flight controllers in the early, early days. So what you have to do is come down here and here are all the different elements that you need to change. And the numbers afterwards are either giving a position. So for example, the OSD altitude, okay? OSD altitude is set to 2240. If we open that image again and look where 2240 is, 2240 is actually over here on the left hand side. So now by knowing what all the numbers are, we can just work through this and change the numbers to be whichever we want. However, if we want to actually disable a particular piece, then you set the number to 234. If you set the number to 234, essentially turns it off or disables it. Now, because I'm setting this up for a pal of mine who only wants the altitude and he only wants the speed showing, I've got the OSD position, the altitude position on the left hand side of the screen, which is way over here. And then I have his number of satellites because he needs to see when the GPS has got a lock. That's at 2074. That is up here on the right hand corner. And then he's got the home distance and direction. I've actually had, he hasn't asked for those, but I've had them in because they're amazingly useful. Uh, they're going to be at the top in the middle, 2092 and 2094. And they're going to be, uh, 2092 is there, 2094. They're going to be at the top in the middle of the screen. Once you've gone through and you've edited these to be where you want them to be, then you are ready to create. Now what I do is I go into sketch, verify, compile, just to make sure that the compiling sketch finishes without any errors in here. If you get any errors, it's probably going to be because you've missed one of the steps and we haven't got one of the libraries installed, or maybe when you installed the BMP280 libraries, you didn't click install all, you click the only one as well. But this is just going to run through, let it finish, and when it gets to the end, it'll tell us whether or not it's happy. And now it says done compiling, it uh, gives us, there's no warnings, there's some information about the memory that's used, but that looks good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug my WeMOS into the computer, and then what I need to do is we're actually going to flash the thing. So we could, if we were going to use the original way of using the flash tool that came with the original board, we could actually just go into sketch and then just say export compile binary, and that will create a binary file in the same directory that the um, INO file was that we opened originally. But we're just going to um, upload the whole thing. But before that, we just need to make sure that the port we've got is the right one. So we're going to click on port here and make sure that the COM port is the one that we've got. It's probably going to be different on your computer. COM3 is just how it happens to appear on mine. So we're going to confirm we have the right board selected. We have the right COM port selected. It's plugged in. We're going to make sure we have the right flash size selected. Once we're happy with that, we can hit sketch and we can say upload. And then what it's going to do is it's going to compile the sketch. And then once the sketch has compiled, it's then going to open the COM port and start to push the program up into the, the WeMOS, which will then become the OSD. And there it is going away, nearly done. And there we are, we're finished, no errors. So we now just unplug the WeMOS Arduino from the computer, plug it back into the daughter board with all the extra components on. And when you fire it up, you'll find that things have moved around and been disabled, and that is how you customize your QLite OSD version 1.0. Thank you for spending your time today watching that video. You can find me in all the usual places on social media. And if you're trying to learn about a subject, then check out the playlist. All of my videos are organized into easy to follow playlists that if you're trying to learn a topic, will take you from the basics right the way through to some pretty advanced stuff.